Truckers be trucking and media be bitching, but are the truckers winning? That rhymes. <coughs> Hello there, you 4.9 million shimmering wonders. Here we are coming together, demonstrating living proof that when people come together as one, change can happen. As a result of the trucker protest, two provinces in Canada are abandoning vaccine passports and members of Trudeau's own party are turning against him. Notably, dear old Mr. Lightbound, who's surely a Jedi. Does this mean that the truckers and protests more broadly are winning? Let's have a look at this. On Tuesday, the premiers of the Canadian provinces of Saskatchewan and Alberta announced plans to end several COVID policies, including the divisive vaccine passports. The two provinces will become the first to end the mandates that have been sparking protests all over the country. According to both premiers, the mandates have outlived their usefulness and that it was time to heal the divisions caused by COVID measures. Saskatchewan's Premier, Scott Moe, asked residents not to judge each other on the basis of vaccination status or become adversarial to those who choose to continue wearing masks after the restrictions are lifted. Don't lose a friend to COVID, he implored. Wow, what sensible language. Because the whole point of the restrictions, the lockdown, the vaccines and everything is we want to preserve and protect life, right? That's the reason. There's not another reason, is there? Cool. Right, so that means that the unvaccinated at this point, no point blaming them, and people that are really for their own reasons down with wearing masks or whatever measures they want to take, let's just leave each other alone and get beyond this. I mean, in a sense, it's the perfect opportunity to recognise that we can't continue to be divided over this matter. We have to recognise that it's a motive and it's brought up emotions in us that we're not properly being rational about. I spoke to Jimmy Dore on my podcast, Under the Skin, and he said the trucker's protest is a fantastic example of what happens when people come together and the necessity of the mainstream media to condemn it because he said strikes are catching. Like if people all over the world start coming together and protesting and demanding a free media and demanding an effective democracy and demanding that money be taken out of politics and demanding that we're all able to have a direct impact on our communities, hospitals, schools, law enforcement, then there's going to be some serious shakedowns. They can't allow that to happen. That's why they have to keep us divided. Meanwhile, a backbench lawmaker from Justin Trudeau's own caucus is accusing the Prime Minister of dividing and stigmatising Canadians by politicising vaccine mandates and COVID-19 restrictions. I mean, don't you remember from the reporting that much of it was actually about shaming people? People were telling you they shame each other. Mais il y a aussi des gens qui sont farouchement opposés à la vaccination. Qui sont extrémistes. Qui croient pas dans la science, qui sont souvent misogynes, qui souvent racistes aussi. C'est un. I'm sure this exists on all sides of this complex issue. People saying, "What are the media still wearing masks for?" Or, "Oh, the unvaccinated, they're ruining everything." Let's just try and look at the facts and take the emotion out of it wherever you stand on this issue, because that way lies a type of freedom. Joel Lightbound delivered the stunning, scathing assessment Tuesday in Ottawa with the big rigs of the so-called Freedom Convoy just outside the door. Both the tone and the policies of my government changed drastically on the eve and during the last election campaign, said Lightbound, whose name makes him sound like a Jedi. A decision was made to wedge, to divide and to stigmatise. I fear that this politicisation of the pandemic risks undermining the public's trust in our public health institutions. If they kill me, I will just come back stronger, he concluded. His concerns trace back to the launch of last summer's election campaign when Trudeau introduced a wedge on day one to highlight the philosophical clash between the vaccinated and the vaccine reluctant. Months later, Lightbound says Canada is seeing negative consequences of the approach. The trucker movement is the consequence of Trudeau's direct approach. Too draconian, too immutable, too lacking in conversation, too lacking in trust of ordinary people, too condemnatory of huge swathes of the population, too vilifying. This movement is what happens when people aren't included in democratic process and when they're pushed too far. Lightbound says he condemns hideous acts and symbols displayed by some demonstrators and he has no sympathy for far-right extremists. We should be clear, due to the nature of this uh, protest and it's uh, plasticity and mutability that we would obviously, 
obviously condemn any form of violence, extremism, prejudice, harassment and intimidation. The thing I like about this protest and the protest movement that has been part of my life for as long as I, well, since I've been a teenager really, is that people come together peacefully to show that we can make a better world together. But Lightbound says he's echoing concerns in recent weeks from hundreds of his constituents. They're worried that measures which ought to be exceptional and limited in time are being normalised with no end in sight, like vaccine passports, mandates and requirements for travellers as he said. I think that's really important, don't you? I think most of us would accept that when we're in an unusual medical emergency, certain measures are sensibly taken. If those measures are not revoked, though, when the emergency appears to be subsiding, then one has to query whether or not there is another agenda or intention at stake. I'm only talking like this to watch my words so as I don't say ones will get me kicked off the internet. They're worried because they feel it's becoming harder and harder to know where public health stops and where politics begins. Something I'm sure we've all questioned. Conservative MPs applauded Lightbound's decision to call out the government. Of course they did, because that would play into their hands. And both sides are willing to use a protest such as this to support their own ideals. Mainstream liberalist media won't report on it or will emphasise factions of a huge protest that are negative because that's convenient for their narrative and the political opponents of liberalism will, like the Conservative Party here, will applaud Lightbound's decision to quote because that suits their own end. What I think is interesting is that the organisers of the trucker convoy refused to accept an endorsement from People's Party of Canada leader Maxime Bernier stating explicitly that it was vital for the movement to keep politicians out. And again, why is that? Because we know that politicians have allegiances and responsibilities and, let's face it, funding that prevents them from being entirely honest. And we wouldn't be in this situation if politicians were able to meet and uh, respond to the needs and requirements of ordinary people, because then you'd have a democracy. You'd have the thing that it is claimed we have. The last thing we want is to have this whole idea of unity amongst Canadians from across the political spectrum and the cultural spectrum to have that be detonated by politicisation, stated Benjamin Ditcher. Obviously, after the events of January the 6th, both parties sought to mobilise and create advantageous legislation in Florida Republican Governor Ron DeSantis invoked the Capitol riot to reintroduce and pass into law a repressive anti-protest bill that had previously failed. 88 such anti-protest bills have been introduced around the country since the Capitol riot by both Democrats and Republicans. We'll um, tag the video at the end. The point that we're trying to make is, of course, politicians of both parties use situations like this to their own advantage. Not to your advantage, to their advantage. Now, for an unbiased look at this situation, we're going to look at Russia Today. Why are you using Russia Today? Russia Today is biased. There ain't no news anywhere else. No one else will report on it. So we've got to turn to Russia Today, all right? Bouncy houses for the children, free food and coffee, music. It looks absolutely bloody brilliant. There's a winter wonderland, this trucker protest. More like a winter carnival than a protest, but a protest it is. I really believe in freedom, but I also like to be nice and snuggly and warm. I'm glad this is happening in Canada and not here. Thousands of people streamed into the city, including many families, over the weekend to join in the protest. While groups of police officers patrolled the streets, volunteers handed out food, water, and other supplies. Exactly what's needed. Exactly what's needed. Volunteers, people coming together. Now, I'm not saying there aren't fringe elements in that movement. There are fringe elements in every movement. I realise now that in protest, it's absolutely necessary that you become, what do I want to say, clear and connected to your principles, that your behaviour has to be exemplary, that you have to put aside all of those ridiculous ideas that we inherited from a century ago around obvious subjects such as race and gender and sexuality. That's just got, you just got to abandon that rubbish. There's no place for that in a free world. But there is a place for ordinary working people of all colours, of all backgrounds, of all religions to come together and stand up to what is evidently unpopular government measures. While protesters carry signs demanding freedom, many residents living in the downtown area say their freedoms have been infringed upon by the incessant noise and activity. That would be annoying, let's face it. No one wants a big load of racket outside their house. But what are you going to do? If like, sh What should happen is people should be able to vote on how they want their country or how they want their province or how they want their town to be run. And if they can't do that, what are you going to do? Oh, well. What's the vibe been like overall? 
one of the most positive experiences of my life. Top five. Like, everybody here is positive. Even most, even most of the cops are too, I'll say that. Even if you don't agree with this particular protest, you have to agree with protest itself. Even if you acknowledge that in any group of 20,000 or 100,000 people, there are going to be, in every single individual, there are problems and there is complexity. But in general, the right to stand up against your government, the right to stand up for what you believe in, surely that's fundamental. Several questions remain, including how much longer can or will the protests continue, and whether or not the fight over freedom from Canada's vaccine mandates has become a battle of wills instead. Now, obviously, if it comes to fruition that there are elements within the trucker movement that are racist or misogynistic, I would obviously condemn that. But I remember when we were reporting on the Indian farmer protest that I saw people say in the comments below, oh, this Indian farm thing, it's only this group that are doing it and stuff. It's like, well, don't you think it's possible that any time there's a protest, that is one way of challenging the mainstream and institutional power so there is a vested interest in finding a way to dismiss and undermine that protest? Can you see that? Say these people were all racist bastards. Would that uh, undermine the protest? Yeah, it would. That would definitely undermine it. If I found out they was all racist bastards, I wouldn't be into that. They're all racist bastards. Are they? Are you sure? Once again, I would condemn any racism. I would condemn any violence. And the kind of change, the kind of revolution, the kind of movement I believe in is a peaceful, loving, inclusive, accepting, tolerant, awakening one. And I hope that that's what we're starting to see more of. And evidently in Canada, people are beginning to change. Even members of Trudeau's own party, like Bound, are turning <laughs> against him. So it seems like the trucker movement is succeeding. And I hope it continues to be a peaceful, inclusive, loving protest because I tell you what, that is what we need in this world right now. New ways of coming together to challenge power open-mindedly, open-heartedly and full of love. And I know that's what you want and I know you're capable of it. But tell me in the comments below, is that what you want? Give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. Can we agree on the important things and put our disagreements to the side while we embark on this vital part of human history? If you enjoyed this video, have a little look at this one. Have a look at my Awakening side channel. Please sign up to my mail list. I'm touring all around the UK in April and May doing big shows. Plymouth, Glasgow, Bristol, Newcastle, Liverpool, Manchester. You can click on a link to get tickets directly or you can sign up to my mailing list. Stay free.